So how do we shoot, how do you shoot a solar eclipse? And the simplest solution that, that I found in 2017 was uh, with a wide angle lens on aperture priority. I, didn't, I wasn't sure if this was gonna work, but it actually, it actually worked. Uh, most of the time I tell people to use uh, the manual settings, use the manual mode on the camera, and I'll, I'll talk more in detail about that. Uh, but this is one experiment that actually worked. I had a, a wide angle lens. Here's a little bit of the information. A, a Nikon D810, which is a full frame camera. And I had a 14 millimeter lens, which is a pretty wide angle lens. Uh, this is on a tripod. The, the camera exposure mode is set for aperture priority, which means I, I set the aperture. The ISO and the aperture stays consistent and the camera will change the shutter speed depending on the light. And what I also did was I used the spot meter mode. Uh, this, this red rectangle uh, in the picture represents the focus spot on my camera, which, which is the spot meter uh, mode, uh, which means that instead of the, the camera uh, making adjustments for the entire frame, it'll just look at that one particular spot and, and decide what the exposure is going to be. Uh, the sky, uh, just the regular blue sky, is very close to a, an 18% gray card, the, the gray card that can be used to, to calibrate your, uh, both your camera but also determine a good exposure for any, any, uh, any kind of light. And, and so the camera's just using that little spot, that, that red, uh, red rectangle, to determine the exposure, and it actually worked out fairly good. Uh, this is actually uh, myself, my wife, and... Um, and one of the NASA photographers that was with our group. Uh, and as, uh, so I, I placed that to get more of a foreground. And it actually worked pretty, worked pretty well. So this, you can also, um, you, you, need auto, uh, de, uh, you need to disable the autofocus so that the camera doesn't try to focus uh, as it gets darker and darker. Uh, but once you focused on, on something, especially with a wide angle lens, the depth of field generally will, co will cover most of it. And, and you'll get pretty much everything in focus. So um, I think a lot of people, they, what they want is the, they want the big sun in, the, in their picture. And for that, you'll need a, a telephoto lens. And so that's one, uh, one thing you could do. Uh, this, is, uh, uh, this is just an uncropped frame from some of the pictures that I shot with a 600 millimeter lens. And you don't really need that, a, a super long telephoto lens. Uh, you can get pictures with a lot of different focal length lenses, uh, I think, which helps. Uh, I did this simulation just to show you uh, if, you, if, if the, the, the entire slide is a um, full frame 35 millimeter image, uh, th this is uh, what the different focal lengths look like uh, for a, to a total eclipse. And you could, actually, uh, you could actually see the effect in your camera just by going out and shooting a picture of the moon, because uh, the, the moon and the sun are the same almost the same angular size in the sky, uh, or, or using your, um, the safe solar filters on your, on your camera, which I'll talk about in a little bit, uh, and doing some pictures of the sun. If you had a 200 or 300 millimeter lens, that's perfectly good. You'll, you'll, get, a, you'll get a nice picture. Uh, it, it'll be a lens that you're familiar with. I, I wouldn't go out and buy a new lens right now, uh, because it, it might take a while to get used, used to the lens, and. You don't want to buy any new equipment before something like an eclipse. You want something that you really know, you, a camera that you know, a lens that you know really well, even, even a tripod. Uh, you, you need to know the equipment very well so that you're used to working with it so that you spend as little time on the equipment as possible and more time just looking up uh, at the eclipse and, and enjoying that experience. For the wide angle pictures, uh, I actually like the wide angle ones better. It kind of gives you more of a sense of the space that you're in, the location that you're in, uh, what it's like, if there were people there, what the landscape is like. And uh, one thing that's, uh, that's interesting to do is to do a sequence of images like this. This is a, a series of, of about, um, I think there's about 26 images here that I've assembled uh, uh, in, during image processing. Yeah, it's, it's, they're uh, individual frames, and then the, uh, the foreground frame is d uh, taken during, during totality. So you, you actually see a lot more in the foreground because the, the filter is off the camera. And then the, uh, the partial phases are taken with, with a filter on the camera. And then you could, you could just uh, assemble this later on after, after you've taken the picture. But it kind of shows you the path of the eclipse uh, through the sky. And it, the, the, this eclipse, at least in the more southern part of the country, will be fairly high in the sky. So to get this kind of view, you'll need a fairly wide angle lens. 
and this is that was with an 18 millimeter. And in 2019, I was in in Chile. The sun was much lower uh, in in the sky, so I was able to use a, a 32 or, or almost a 35 millimeter lens on a, on a full frame camera uh, to get this picture. And you can see that the, the sun, of course, as the focal length gets longer, it's it becomes relatively uh, larger in the picture. And the very first total eclipse that I saw was in a place called uh, Spitsbergen Svalbard, which is a uh, archipelago that's uh, north of the Arctic Circle. It's very far north of Norway. It was the only one of the only pieces of land that the, this total eclipse was uh, seen from. Uh, and so this is a, a cropped image from a 24 millimeter lens, uh, and because I had a much much wider much wider view. Uh, so that kind of gives you an idea of of the different focal lengths uh, that you might be able to use. Uh, the the one advice I kind of give when talking about lenses is that choose one or the other idea, uh, either a telephoto or the wide angle. If you, first of all, if you've never seen a total eclipse, don't try to take a lot of equipment to the, to the eclipse uh, because you really want to experience the eclipse. Uh, if you've never used two cameras, if you happen to have two cameras and you've never used two cameras to shoot something like, like an eclipse, don't start on April 8th because it, it's, there's, uh, there's always a disaster waiting to happen. And the, the more equipment you take, the more that can go wrong. And so you don't want to be trying to fix something during totality because you want to be able to uh, watch it and, and, and experience it. Uh, let's see. So then a few tips, just a few technical tips about what to do uh, during the eclipse. Uh, shoot everything on raw. Uh, I mean, I, I, I shoot everything that I shoot on, on the raw setting. Uh, that'll give you the maximum amount of qual quality in the image, and you'll be able to uh, work on it easier once you get in, in, to, into your image processing program. Uh, for the white balance, auto usually works pretty good. Uh, or you could, you could have, put it on a daylight setting. It's often a little sun icon on the camera. And uh, on the daylight setting, at least there'll be a consistent setting throughout the entire eclipse. With the auto, auto uh, white balance tends to shift a little bit, uh, sometimes not very much, but it might shift a little bit. With daylight, it'll be one setting throughout the entire eclipse. If you're shooting in raw and you need to make a little bit, uh, a, a, an adjustment to your pictures uh, once you start looking at them, then with, if everything is all in the daylight setting, then you, could, you know how to you can make with a one shift and it'll apply to the uh, rest of the pictures as well. Um, except for the the uh, auto um, the aperture priority example that I gave at the start, uh, everything should be on manual exposure because the the uh, the auto settings, especially when you have the filter on, won't won't provide you with a good uh, uh, setting on your camera. It, it, they could vary a lot, and that's that's the last thing you wanted to do. With manual exposure, you're, you're setting the ISO and the shutter speed and the f-stop. Uh, and it's not, it's not changing at all. So you could set it to one setting, and then it'll st you can stay that way through much, much of the eclipse. You will have to make some changes uh, during totality, but at least uh, there won't be a lot of variety in as you're, if, if the settings change. Uh, a sturdy tripod is good. It doesn't have to be a big tripod, just something that's fairly sturdy. And a, a remote shutter release. I think uh, especially a wireless one would be, would be great. Uh, you could use this to fire your camera. And the great thing about the, the wireless one, you just have this in your hand. You could, you could still be looking up at the eclipse during totality, and you could still be taking pictures with your, uh, just by pressing your finger, pressing your thumb on the, on the remote. And so, uh, so that sort of uh, hel helps your whole, uh, your, uh, your whole progress with the, with the uh, photographs. And let's see. So these are the different kinds of pictures that you might see uh, during an eclipse. Uh, there's the partial phase, which is the, the moon is kind of slowly cutting into the sun, and that, that's with the filter on. And uh, uh, just seconds before totality, you get this, what's called a diamond ring effect, or there's also uh, uh, another effect called Bailey's beads, which are very, uh, very small and bright points of light along the edge of the moon, where the moon is, and then, uh, uh, of course, totality. You got a question in the chat. Oh, sure. Uh, someone's asking, so you set the settings and then put the lens filter on or do the settings with the filter on? No, you definitely put the filter on your lens first, uh, which I'll do a little demonstration here. 
and, and, then, and then you find the sun, you focus, and you put your settings on. And I'll talk to this, about the settings uh, in, in a couple of minutes. But the, uh, you yeah, definitely put your filter on first. There's a question from the audience. Uh, do you know how long the diamond ring or the LED beads last and if it's safe to uh, view without them, without the glasses during that time frame? Let's see, the, the diamond ring and Bailey beads, how long do they last? And then can you look at them without the glasses? You can't, you can't look at them with the glasses because essentially what the diamond ring is, is a s tiny sliver of the face of the sun. So you're still looking at, at the surface of the sun. So you need the glasses on. And the same with the Bailey's beads. Uh, it, it lasts, I think, uh, Tony, you might know the answer to this. I, I think it lasts about 30 seconds, maybe less. Okay, yeah, uh, closer to 15 seconds. Uh, Tony's a fellow uh, AAA member from the Astronomy Club, and so I think the, uh, so the, it, it's a very short uh, time, time span, and I'll go through a little bit uh, the, the kind of uh, the, uh, the procedure of how, how things flow during, uh, during that transition, but it's a very short transition. Stan, the photos that you, the wide angle photos that you shot of the partial. Yes. Were you, did you have a solar filter on for those photos with the wide lens? Yeah, with the wide lens that I shot of the sequence of the partial phase, uh, I, d I had a filter on it through, throughout the whole partial phases. I took the filter off during totality, and then I put it back on for the rest of the uh, rest of the eclipse. So you got, you got one more. Uh, have you tried bracketing your exposure? Oh, uh, let's see. I'll, in, a, in a few minutes, I'll talk about uh, using the using the bracketing mode. But for the most part. You, uh, during, uh, during the partial phase, you, you don't really need to do any bracketing. If you've got a good exposure of the sun to start out with, unless you have, uh, it, unless there are clouds or oftentimes there are smoke from fires uh, that, that uh, can, can come in, into your area. But uh, at least the, uh, for the most part, you really don't need uh, to, to do any bracketing. Yes? I'm a little confused. At one point, you spoke, you spoke of using aperture priority, and then you said use manual. Uh, exposure, I'm, I'm not sure which way to go. Right. If you were going to just shoot with a wide angle lens, you, you could set it on aperture priority. Uh, and if you just had the one camera on a tripod, you, you could do that. You need to use the spot meter mode to put that somewhere in the sky to get an accurate reading. And you, you could, that's the simplest setup that, that you could use. Uh, and the, uh, as I talk now about shooting with the filter on and shooting shooting totality, that's when you would use the manual mode on your, on your camera just for more control over the, the actual pictures that you're taking. I see. Thank you. Yes, in the back. Uh, the previous slide, your dip slide, the picture of the sun showed more of like the um, solar flares versus and less of the corona. How, how did you take that shot and why is it that this has more of the corona and just all white versus the other one that had like, you know, slightly orange stuff coming out of the... Oh, you're talking about this, the slide that's up right now? Uh, the, the previous slide. Okay. Previous slide. See how that one has like, oh, no, that one. See how it has less of the corona, less of the white, and more of the orange, like, solar flares? Oh, yeah, this is just the, uh, an ex a, a much longer exposure during that time period. You have to have a, uh, I'll talk a little bit more about, go into detail about exposure, but at, at this particular camera setting, you get a little bit of the corona, but you also get some of the some of the solar prominences that you see. Uh, these these reddish orange uh, parts here, they're big solar prominences coming off of the sun, and that's that's what you could get during this the early part of the of totality. And that's a longer exposure. It's a shorter. It's a shorter exposure. Yeah, shorter overall exposure. Yes. If you're shooting uh, the wide angle shot to get a series of images, right? and you want the space between each image roughly the same size as the diameter of the sun, is that a minute, is that five minutes? Um, right. And does it vary by how far north or south you are? Uh, yeah, if, if, uh, if, you want to, if you're shooting a wide angle picture with the sequence of, of the, the sun into totality and the, the partial phases, and the, the, you want the gap to be about the diameter of a sun? Is that yeah. what you're saying? Yeah, the gap, to make the gap about the diameter of, of the sun, uh, I think the sun moves its diameter every, every four minutes. And so that, that, that would be the interval you put. The, what, uh, what I showed you here 
is th this is every five minutes that, that, I, that I just picked a frame every five minutes because uh, to me every five minutes there is enough of a change between each sun where you can get the idea that there's this, there's this gradual change going on and if you're going to do um, you, you could you could do four minutes if you uh, if you want and that would that would be about a solar diameter uh, there there are there probably be at least one or two more suns on the partial on each partial side to uh, uh, in your picture does that time change by how far north or south you are along I, the path of the I don't think latitude has anything to do with with the actual uh, uh, difference between because it would it'd be uh, yeah, I think it, I, I don't think there'd be much much of a much of a change, but you could on on things like um, uh, photographers ephemeris or some of the planetarium software, you could actually check that. You could check the time and you could just just see how 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 much the sun is moving uh, per time unit. Okay, let me get on to let's see a little bit more about the exposure. So these are the different kinds of pictures that you might be able to. Uh, see and record uh, dur during the during eclipse if you're if you're in the path of totality.